Hello everyone, Gilly here. Let's continue solving Advent of Code problems for 2018. This is day nine, Marble Mania. I'm gonna do the whole day as one problem. Initially when I went to solve it, I used lists and it was a horrible solution. It was hideously ugly and it didn't scale well to the second part. Now, I actually was able to solve the second part using lists, um, but it was kind of coincidental. I uh, got, the, got it coded out and I had like, five minutes before I had to go somewhere, so I just kicked it off, left, and I have no idea how long it took, but that was initially how I got the value. But thinking back to my Python days, I remembered this data structure called a deck queue or a deck or something like that, and I kind of thought that maybe it was a better structure for this. It, I think it's short for a double-ended queue, and basically it's like a linked list where you can kind of insert on both sides really quickly, and cells are linked both ways so that you can quickly traverse it in either direction. But anyways, um, I looked up the big O of, the, of it and its operations, and it seemed to fit the problem perfectly. So implementing it with a deck was definitely the right way to go. But basically, uh, day nine is kind of complicated. It's not really hard, but it's just got a lot of interesting little details to it. Um, some elves are playing a game with marbles where they're setting the marbles in a circle and they're basically setting new marbles two marbles away from the current marbles location and making the new marble the current marble. So, for example, uh, part four, elf four, is going to put a marble down, or I guess the next part, elf five, is going to put a marble down. So they put five over here. Then they put six over here. Then they put seven over here. Then we circle back. This is a circular list, a circular marble arrangement and they put it here. Now, where the problem gets interesting is whenever we put a marble that's value is divisible by 23, basically what we have to do is we have to, instead of placing it, score it. So the current elf who's going is gonna take that marble and say, this is part of my score. They're gonna step back in the thing, which could, of course, cycle back to the beginning. And they're gonna take, they're gonna step back seven and they're gonna take the marble that's there and they're gonna add that to their score. They're gonna take that out as well. And in the end, the problem just wants to know who, or not who, but what is the greatest score? Um, what is the winner's score? So I'm going to solve this in Rust. Rust turned out to be a pretty nice language to solve it in, although not necessarily with the list solution. I bet Python would have been better with that. But here's our input. We have 713 players, and the last marble, so this is how many iterations we're going to have, is going to be worth 71,082 points. So let's go ahead and let's figure this out. So we're gonna start with our main function. And our main function is gonna have the players or the count of players, which is gonna be a U size. I don't know a lot about, that's 413. I don't know a lot about the numeric types in Rust and I don't really care to know too much right now, but um, I kind of just did what worked for the problem. So there's gonna be a lot of casting, a lot of ugliness, but whatever. So the last marble is worth, it's gonna be another U size. And that's gonna be this value here. Um, and then we're gonna use select mutable circle. So our actual circle, let's represent it using a vec deck of u size, which is going to be just a new vec deck. Um, and I suppose we have to use, we'd say use collections, std collections, Back deck. So it's going to be a double-ended list, which is really going to represent the problem well, and we're going to just use mutables for now. So let mute scores. So we're also going to use another data structure, um, specifically a hash map. I'm just going to let Rust figure out what the type is in this case. We're also going to use a hash map to, to include it to track the scores. So a player has a number which will map to their score, um, sort of the same way in the problem. Now we don't actually have to do that. We could use an array because we know the number of players, but uh, sometimes hash maps are a little easier to work with. Sometimes they're not. Depends kind of what you're comfortable with. So the problem tells us that first, before we actually start playing the game, we start with a, just zero, a marble worth zero in the middle of the circle. So then what are we gonna do? We're gonna loop through the marble values. And the marble values are just gonna be from one because one comes after zero to the last marble's value. And we've got to add one because the upper bound on a range in Rust is exclusive. So then we've got to go, we've got to say, if the marble, so we care about, um, I'm gonna call this marble value rather than values. 
We care about numbers that are divisible by 23, but let's handle numbers that aren't divisible by 23 first. So if this number is not divisible by 23, then what we're gonna do is we're going to do something which I'm gonna call cycle two of a reference, immutable reference to the circle. And basically what cycle's gonna do, and again, remembering back to my Python days, um, I think it was called, uh, what was it called? Um, rotate maybe, but basically what cycle is going to do is it's going to pretend that the head of the list is where we currently are in the list and it's going to pop and push so that the head moves um, one direction or the other direction depending on the value passed down to cycle. So it's going to pretty much represent the current index in the list or the current number in the list just by shoveling values around um, which will prove to be really really nice. So let's go ahead and let's write cycle. I don't think um, I don't think Rust has a built-in for this um, or anything in the standard library, but I think Python does. It's pretty useful. So um, you, so we're gonna take an int uh, 32 because it could be negative. And then we're gonna take a reference to our circle, which is gonna be a mute vec deck u size. Um, this actual solution probably could be a little more, a little more generic, honestly, but I'm just gonna hack it in to be appropriate for this current problem rather than using generics and making cycle a generic function. So if i is greater than zero, that means we have to cycle in the positive direction. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say let value equal circle dot pop back dot unwrap unwrap not warp or zero. So what is this saying? This is saying from the circle um, pop the back element. In other words take it off. Give me that value. And then because, you know, circle could be empty in reality, and it won't actually be empty in this problem if I code it right, um, because it could be empty, we get back an optional. And unwrap or is just a way to say, get the value out of the optional, and if there's not a value there, use this value instead. So that shouldn't actually be hit, but we need to include it. Um, then we're gonna do circle.push front. So we're just gonna take the value off the back and put it onto the front. And that's how we're gonna change the way we're pointing. And that's just gonna do one, but cycle could be given a number bigger than one. So we're gonna say i minus one, and then we're gonna give it circle again, just to recurse. All right, so then else if, if i is less than zero, we're basically just gonna do the opposite of everything. So we're gonna pop front, we're gonna push back, and we're gonna increment cycle. So we're trying to approach zero. And then notice I don't have a case here for where i equals zero because at that point we're done. If you give it zero, we're done as well. So we're gonna cycle. And then once we've cycled two, which is what the problem wants us to do, well, we can kind of go and just insert the element that we care about. So we can just say circle dot push front, um, push front the value or I'm sorry, push back the value because we're inserting after, right? Um, we've moved to that place and now we've got to push to the back. So we're at the back of the list, um, the marble value. All right, otherwise, if we find a value that is divisible by 23, we've got to do a little more work, but basically we're just gonna say, okay, what player are we currently talking about? And that player is just gonna be the marble value. Um, if you look at the actual input, uh, the marble value can be used to calculate the player value because the marble value is just incrementing and the player value is repeating um, after nine in this example. So we can use a modulus to figure that out. So it's gonna be the marble value as an I32 minus one modulus the players as an I32 as well. And the reason I'm using an I32 is because any kind of unsigned thing or U32, a U size, um, Subtracting probably isn't a great idea um, from that. So let score equal, and I really like this element of Rust. We're gonna go to scores, and we're gonna say entry at the player. So what is the player's current, like, current score? And we're gonna use one-based indexing here, um, if I want, or zero-based. If I wanted to use one-based, I would just add one on here. Um, and this is what I really like. We get the entry, or we'll insert zero. So now we have a reference to the entry in the hash map, and it's totally safe because if we didn't have the entry, we're just gonna insert zero there and we can operate on zero. Really cool, I love that element. 
I haven't seen that before in a language. Um, well, I guess maybe I have when you get key value pairs in other languages, but that's not the same. So we're going to cycle negative seven like the problem wants us to do. And then we're going to pass a reference to our circle. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to modify score by saying it's the old score plus the value of the marble. So that's going to add on the marble whose value is currently a multiple of 23. And then we're going to do a circle dot pop back. So we're going to pull the value seven before where we were when we started off and add it on. And because we're doing a pop back, we also need to do an unwrap or zero because, you know, a list or an array or a vec deck can be empty. Um, so we've got to deal with the empty case in reality, even though it should never be empty in this case because we never lose elements um, other than when we get to a multiple of 23. And in that case, we're losing two elements. You can kind of reason about the fact that it's not going to be empty. Um, but anyways, so in the end, we want to print line we can give it a format string of the line we want to print. And the thing we want to print is just the scores values. So get the values from the dictionary. And then we want the max score. And again, we've got to do a good old unwrap or, and what do we have to unwrap or? A reference to zero. So overall, I think this is the answer. So let's go ahead and let's compile it, see how we did. We have an error. Um, I looks like I missed the C in vec deck. All right, let's try to compile it again. Okay, it looks like we have another error. Uh, looks like I just copied VecDeck, so I need one more there and probably one more, oh, a couple more. <laughs> That's what I get for copy-paste coding everywhere. And then let's see what happens now. We have one more. We have a circle dot push front, push font. You can tell I've been doing CSS, too much CSS. Front, all right, let's try it again. And there we go, it compiled. Now let's go ahead and let's run it and see if we got the correct answer. And we did, that's the correct answer. Now, in part two, it's the same problem, but they're just like, hey, if you use list symbol in this, that was a silly implementation because we're just gonna add, uh, we're gonna multiply the input or the number of iterations by 100. So add two zeros there. Let's run it again, see if we can do the correct answer for day two in a reasonable amount of time, or actually we gotta compile it first. <laughs> then we can run it. Do, 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 do. And it takes a few seconds, but there we go, the correct answer for part two.